Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again to uh, my online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. So, we have uh, gone through several lectures, several sessions uh, over last few weeks and we have discussed many issues and today we are at the last lecture of this series and this is lecture number 40 and here we will basically uh, discuss uh, not nothing new to it, but uh, what the journey uh, that we have made so far, what like we have discussed various issues, we have discussed on material, we have discussed on different techniques, different structural form. Then we have also seen the change, the architectural evolution from the primitive age to the present age. So, with this the uh, name of this session, name of this lecture is basically structure and architecture, the past the present and the future. So, we will be discussing on that. Now, as uh, at the beginning of the lecture, uh, probably the first lecture, we have discussed various definition of architecture, form and structure. Here again, uh, just uh, uh, you know get to know about the definition. So, there are multiple definitions of architecture given by different uh, architects, famous architects with uh, different personalities. But at the same time, if I take something in very short, like architecture is basically art articulation of spaces with proper application of your science, technology and sociology as well. So, all other aspect will govern the type of uh, outcome that we are expecting as architecture. Now, if we just see in this slide, architecture is articulation of spaces to there are different purposes. So, let us discuss uh, this one by one. So, protect from externalities both nature and predators and this was uh, the main root cause of making buildings. If you recall, if I am sure that all of us we read in history, maybe when we started reading history that time itself like earlier. Uh, our primitive men. So, they used to live in the cave. Why? Because that uh, they found is safe to protect themselves from other animals or maybe other natural calamities with a heavy wind, flood, something like that. But that cave is not considered to be the man made architecture, it was not made by that person or the people of that time. Now, gradually over the time because of some changes required in the system, the men they started developing their own houses. Whether it is tree house or then later on maybe your uh, stone structure, stone hinge or maybe in the modern age where we are almost uh, you know virtually touching the sky with the skyscraper, this whole journey there is one single point uh, that actually influence that is the need. Whenever there is a problem, whenever there is a challenge to the human being, they just realize that they need something to do, they need something to improve and then gradually all the innovations that came into picture, not in the building sector, all the innovations you take. If there is no need, there is no invention. And then gradually like based on the search, based on the experiment, based on the failure, based on different success. So, now we are in this present age and gradually now the process has not been stopped. Thousand and thousand years that we know from the history of whatever something is documented that how human their you know building technology that improved to this uh, present day. But yes, to protect from those uh, externalities both natural and from the other 
predators that was the threat that time definitely from other animals and all and that were of a gigantic size it's not like the now then men comment over other animals but during that time that was a challenge and then they uh, created that now it is also to ensure safety and security of resources and this is very important if you have some resources with you definitely want some place where you can keep it if you open in uh, like if you stay in a open open to sky area so the security level will be less there will be different threat uh, of you know losing the resources facilitate family living so when uh, they used to make the family the, then the living uh, like in a community so they need some kind of settlements that also very much required like it is not that I roam around here and there. So, definitely with that social uh, community bonding, so that also facilitated by a building. Provide privacy that is also very important, uh, which can be created. Achieve desired aesthetic. So, not only making your simple structure, but in order to uh, make it visually pleasing, people also they have done with a basic structure it is safe, but definitely people they prefer to make it more beautiful. So, that is something where uh, definitely it is not directly related to the safety or other thing, but yes that the visual pleasure. Say for example, when you make a building, so we all know we taste it that if you make your building with the, this particular um, reinforced concrete structure and then we just make frame structure then the brick work that is good enough but then uh, if we add plaster is okay then if you make it just plastering it's okay but why we go for painting it and different kind of shade painting putting a uh, some you know kind of artifacts there is basically not uh, you know improving the strength of the building it's basically a visual uh, pleasure that one always try to make their building so beautiful that will be appreciated by others. So, this is another uh, reason that also people they try to innovate something which can add some value. Explore opportunities and this is something where we all uh, can agree like whenever we are doing something and we are repeatedly uh, getting the same thing, the same food say for example, if uh, we are taking same food each day, uh, thrice a day, then probably we will get bored. We always try to get something different. Even the ingredients are same, we will try something different or else we just try something totally different from what is available to us and we taste it. If we like it, we can take a move. Say uh, you have practiced, suppose you are taking a food from a canteen and you like that canteen very much and there is a new canteen come up and then definitely you are going to uh, you know try that canteen and then when you get that that food is uh, even better then you will get a shift. So, it is true for any innovation where we keep on investing how we can improve the situation and there is no end to it and if there is a end virtually that means there will be no progress after that. So, that need is uh, always uh, be there to have the innovation. Optimality uh, is another thing where like how you can optimize the resources, the construction in uh, other lectures we have also discussed something on the effectiveness. So, this optimality in design parameters in structural uh, arrangement that is always a challenge and then if you can achieve it that will be uh, good nothing can be better than that. Then the last was is very vital word and nowadays like it is being applied everywhere as the sustainability. So, sustainability concept is something where definitely it says that you use the resources in such a manner that that will not disturb the future. The future generation can also get uh, something out of that because whatever we are using to build our environment. So, we are using natural resources directly, indirectly and we are also you know damaging uh, the environment, but that will be a threat for the future generation to come. 
So, better uh, if we go for at least this uh, you know concept of your built environment or the building, if we can pick up some of the things which will uh, be environmentally safe, also economically uh, viable and also socially accepted. So, your economical, uh, social and then environmental, these three will give a sustainable environment and the building can be uh, one of the major factor to that. This sustainability can be applied in other area as well, but in we will stick to the architecture. And we are not going to discuss detail of the sustainable architecture uh, in this lecture, because that is again a full fledged subject that um, has different part, but in the context of the need of a better articulation, better architecture, uh, I just mentioned this particular term. Now, uh, we will just go through some of the images. So, this lecture uh, purposefully I have not uh, you know uh, put many words, many texts to define anything. So, through this picture we will try to understand the journey from uh, like the first house to you know even it is continuing. We, we do not have any perfect idea that after uh, 50 years or after 100 years what will be the building uh, typology, how building will look like and what would be the material, how that will be constructed. But at least with the trend uh, we can guess something that what could be and like what will be the scenario. So, this is some representative uh, photographs of a cave and that was a natural resources that was a gift uh, we can consider to the uh, human uh, being at that time to get the shelter inside that which helped them to you know protect themselves from the externalities. Now, after that when they uh, started making at their own, so they used its uh, and then the tree houses uh, uh, like they started uh, making their houses uh, with the branch of trees uh, uh, and then also the you know material the agriculture based uh, material or maybe even earlier uh, like in some presentation we have seen that they use the uh, skin of the animal they hunt and then they make the structure at their own. So, these are some of the primitive structure they made uh, and like they use the uh, available material which is easily available, they just try to make it. Now, this is the structure which is very important and then it has very uh, much importance to the evolution. So, where the uh, structure is being made with the stone and then uh, this is the first uh, your Po, uh, post, uh, not the post is basically rather uh, the wall slab construction. So, where uh, the stone is being placed uh, you know in a such a, a situation which is your uh, as a cantilever to the base and then on top of this they support the another slab and that is create some enclosure. And there are many examples where this has been used even in the temple, even in for small structure. So, this is something very much primitive and uh, that, uh, that progress has been started where the wall slab construction uh, is in the picture. Next to that this is again a representative picture, we cannot have uh, a real one, but uh, during the time of uh, Neolithic age, uh, that time like they were uh, uh, in a position to you know just move from this hunting to they started growing crops and then they started making the buildings next to the uh, river bank. Uh, because a portion they were also engaged in the fishing activity and they use very simple structure, they use the mud and then they use the uh, you know uh, the timber or the bamboo like material branches and then they use the crops uh, like uh, those straw to make the roof and the plan is very simple that time. So, this is basically the circular plan easy to construct the conical roof at the top. Uh, so, this is at that time. 
Now, later on then there is a shift from that to the ancient uh, civilizations and then Egyptian uh, civilization is one of the one that still we are amazed that how this kind of great pyramid being created that time with a stone one after another. So, perfect uh, arrangement so that still uh, this is something uh, really uh, we can appreciate. So, they have started making this building, but this is something is not the building to really live, it has another value. So, that there was a belief of uh, life after death and then uh, on that purpose this has been uh, designed and the mummy is kept and then all the belongings uh, uh, is also uh, kept with him after death. Now, uh, uh, after that if you see the Greek civilization and all, then also like believe in gods and the hierarchy of like uh, to be pleased. So, this is the Parthenon um, which is remains of the Parthenon that is being placed in front of you. So, again here is the change again. So, earlier in that Stonehenge when we have discussed the wall slab combination, so here it is basically your post beam, post beam construction where it uh, was realized that you do not need to make very solid wall. Instead of that you can use the post or later on is being uh, used as a column, column beam structure and that is really giving uh, the satisfactory result. And that has been uh, practiced in uh, Greek as well as in Roman when we have seen some structure like uh, pantheon and all. Now, this is something uh, in from the room where this uh, multi-story structure being made with this kind of masonry work and use of arches. Now, slowly if you see even uh, this is not very simple architecture or just to have a very rough finish, each of the columns look very identical. So, that means the sense it is basically not the supporting the structure, it is now beyond that in order to make it beautiful, attractive, in order to present it to uh, the so called uh, like the believe in God and all. So, all these small uh, you know minor minor details to that, all this curvature, all this you know design in the capital whether it is Doric, Corinthian or Gothic uh, kind of capital that is really uh, something beautiful. So, many thousands uh, years back this kind of arrangement is really appreciable. So, there is a move uh, from a simple uh, structure to now ornamenting structure and that uh, journey is started from this Greek and Roman and gradually even will follow up it in the Byzantine Gothic uh, age. So, this is again a multi story structure the masonry came into picture uh, and then what I was talking about during the Gothic. So, this structure like looking into uh, this image, so definitely the basic requirement to get shelter and all that deviate uh, little bit. Now, is uh, um, the buildings for the community, buildings for the religions and all these worship came into picture. Like it is not the own house to just protect myself, it is basically the belief in some kind of you know super power and then the community building like whether it is making the church, whether it is making some kind of temple uh, and whatever the form they just were looking for. And then if you see the ornamentation like the arches, their carvings and then the details, the selection of the material like the stone, different kind of stone. So, ornamentation of structure. Uh, was uh, really practiced that time and still uh, they are uh, existing in the world and then uh, definitely those creations is really appreciable. And along with that uh, what I just forgot to mention then this is basically the scale. So, when you uh, talk about the scale of architecture, the, sc uh, the scale in architecture is basically uh, with respect to the human being. So, then uh, in earlier cases is all like if you see this pyramid, the height of the pyramid and what should be the size of a mummy that is a human height and compared to that this height is something really uh, very big and 
um, gigantic. So, gigantic scale and then even here also those columns beams they are also making in gigantic scale. But gradually uh, then the ornamentation and then when the minimalistic form has come afterwards that we have discussed in some of the lectures of the evaluation, evolution of the you know architectural system. Then this is something uh, known to us I guess all of us we know this building. Again this building is not for uh, you know just uh, to uh, have a regular uh, type building. So, again you can see the scale, the composition, the beauty, ornamentation uh, is so beautiful. So, this is some type of architecture that has been created. Maybe the purpose uh, differs. Sometimes it is just to leave. Sometimes it showcases the uh, you know uh, some kind of power. Even the Victi Tower in uh, India. So that sometimes those kind of structure is made for showcase the uh, prosperity of the kingdom, king, uh, or show the you know the power of the king or the uh, who in the top. Uh, level of the social hierarchy. So, they are showcasing this kind of elements. Again the scale is very uh, much gigantic to that. Now, there is a move. So, I am not here giving a uh, you know chronological order or um, giving a time series, but again the move like uh, this is something in uh, Sydney Opera House, the technology being changed. Now, coming from the traditional your masonry work, load bearing work, now it is transformed to the shale structure. And then we have discussed in detail in you know in some uh, in form of some uh, you know lectures like uh, I guess uh, almost 3 to 5 lectures on different kind of structural form which is non uh, traditional to the load bearing or very regular structure, the shale structure, dome structure, uh, then you have the space frame structure like that. This is something. Uh, another improvement. Now, this is another wonder uh, where the space frame being used as reinforcement and uh, like this structure being made with the space frame. So, this is a, a design uh, by architect Jaha Hadid. Again this form like it is not regular, now it is uh, breaking that particular conventional straight forward orthogonal architecture to this kind of form, where there is not much ornamentation, itself it is showing a ornament, it is no additional ornamentation is required, this kind of building itself is representing as ornament. Now, coming to that, this is another scale and now coming to the residential scale where it is in human scale. You need some space to live uh, with your family or just live uh, your uh, uh, what we can, you can just uh, uh, protect yourself uh, from the other uh, openness. So, in that case, this is a Habitat 67 that was made and where this different uh, cuboid, uh, this very rectangular uh, shape that has been arranged in such a manner that all will get the facility to get some kind of view and exposure. So, this is another arrangement where like it is not horizontal, it is a combination of horizontal and vertical combination that is of the scale. So, so far the whatever the pictures we have seen starting from the cape to this. So, this the journey changes at various time like the scale change, the ornamentation, the structural arrangement, the materials, all the components they keep on changing to coming to the you know the present day and it is all because of the need. When there was need to make such gigantic structure that was on uh, the comment of a king, so that was made then uh, suddenly uh, there is a demand for the individuals, the larger community then this kind of structure being made. And then uh, that has uh, something uh, the composition being established and then suddenly like this some, uh, some requirement is there to go uh, high rise. The reason is the space availability for the metro cities and like where almost like if you consider New York and other uh, 
cities like in Shanghai. So already they have done it before, but now this is in practice in India as well. This is a picture from Kolkata and is proposed already. It's come uh, almost in the bhaj of completion. Everything it will be used in. Uh, you know very soon so this is basically the 42 and um, now as per the record this is the tallest building in India uh, which is constructed like before that there were some buildings imperial 1 and 2 and Mumbai that was considered to be the tallest but now this will be the tallest in Kolkata and you can see that the earlier tallest that how it is uh, uh, suppressing and then a uh, days to come it will be something like that which will solve the need of uh, the living space. And then uh, this is basically the high rise structure, high rise residential or mixed use uh, towers which will have. So, in some presentations we have discussed the you know some buildings like the Shanghai tower whether it is considered to be city within city all the facilities. Uh, shopping that is already being planned in the same building. So, uh, similar to that this is again uh, that was uh, from India and this is the world like still like still uh, before the kingdom um, uh, tower. So, this is basically the concept to be the tallest uh, tower like building in the world. So, this is basically the Burj Khalifa. And Again, if you consider the structural system, so definitely it changes with the height. Uh, we have seen in, in the recent lectures that how the evolution of the high rise building uh, that developed, like starting from a small two, three story building to the you know 100 story, 200 story building, how it is being made and different structural form, how the tube structure, how like uh, your different shear wall, different uh, advanced structure, tube in tube structure, uh, then uh, the outrigger, exterior structure, interior structures, those are uh, those system are developed to just get this kind of result which will actually be safe uh, from all this you know lateral load due to the heavy wind pressure at different height or maybe uh, to save uh, to be safe from the seismic activity. Now, this is something uh, again uh, you can see uh, the composition where it is uh, being taken from the Dubai and the construction is now going on all high rise development. So, where uh, you can see that scale uh, here it is not basically gigantic because it is like consists of different flows, but the overall skyline has changed and this is uh, hap this has happened not just for uh, like to make something very much uh, high to just get some kind of uh, you know appreciation or to get uh, degree at the tallest building to solve the purpose within a limited area with the compact area how you can serve maximum population. So, uh, that is something the engineering that innovation that help to make this kind of building so uh, high rise. Uh, this is another example and this is uh, from your uh, New York. So, you can see that overall urbanization if you see that all buildings they are uh, almost multi story building and that was the need within the stipulated area it is all compacted and definitely we should even go in future like this is already being developed. Now, there will be increase in population and there is no such land. So, either we have to go for some alternative to make some structure using the underwater structure some part of the world we do have this or maybe some, some engineering by which we can you know solve the purpose of the people. This is from uh, again Shanghai. So, uh, this is the Shanghai tower I just mentioned earlier. And then if you see the skyline and you see that human scale, so the skyline itself is basically showing some wonders and this all architecture. Again if you consider the height of the pyramid and all they will some match with this height, but now the purpose it can cater a uh, huge number of population. So, the purpose has changed for uh, going high rise, but at the same time when you talk about the high rise building uh, very much advanced structure. But 
there are other factors as well where like a particular building to be made for showing the culture, the typology of the building like some this is some example I picked up from Japan. So, Japanese temple is something like this where you think for any, take any temples from uh, the southern part of India. So, you will get a different kind of form. So, then probably your orthogonal or that kind of you know tube structure will not work. So, this ornamentation still uh, ha has some value where this form itself giving uh, the typology. So, looking at this we can see that this is basically a Japanese architecture or this is a Mongol architecture. So, this building typology uh, is also to be carried out. Now, so far whatever we have seen and all, so this is something definitely aspiring, inspiring and very high class. Now, this is something where also it is a slum development and this is from the Dharabi in Mumbai. So, here also the space is essential uh, constraint, but then also uh, the affordability plays a crucial role. So, this entire area where it is horizontally spreaded and the life is uh, really very much uh, suffering. So, if you search about that there are many documentary, there are different videos as well. So, where you can see the conditions of the life. So, what exactly uh, the progress we have made to give the built environment uh, is now uh, we have to think on it. So, how to do it, how to improve it. Now, in this case uh, this is something where again uh, is something futuristic where the city like all this park that uh, is uh, moved up. So, these are some uh, hypothetical uh, projects that can be developed where this can be made at some upper level. And then this is something where uh, like uh, your habitat 67, so this kind of uh, development of houses can be made. Now, uh, this is very catchy point in this slide and this is one of the important slide that we need to understand that change is uh, the only constant. The statement is very much uh, famous and exactly this is something we need to. If we do not change then probably we will be losing something, we cannot uh, really sustain with that. So, for that what change we require the purpose, the purpose has changed and that we have seen from those examples earlier the sometimes the purpose may be only to showcase the power of the king that is why so gigantic structure is made invested so much of capital to that. Whereas, uh, the common people their need was not that much highlighted, but now the purpose is to serve if we consider this slum and all though this is something where the affordability is concerned, but definitely we should go for some low cost cost effective solutions for them. So, that they can also enjoy the built environment. The requirements has changed, earlier the requirement was different nowadays with the different uh, uh, gadgets and all. So, we need some buildings where it will be very smart building where uh, based on your uh, you know um, instruction that building will perform accordingly. So, this application of IT uh, information technology uh, has come into this and there are other requirements. The loads, this is something uh, was there is present also and it will be, but then to tackle these loads different uh, technology, uh, different uh, construction technology, different uh, arrangement of structure uh, is has been developed and then you know, this is uh, taking into consideration. The architectural design has changed whether like whether it was of the minimalistic form or maybe it is of making uh, something very broad that has changed. Culture, this culture plays crucial role to uh, make the form and structure and that we have seen in case of the temple or in case of uh, your uh, pyramid and then maybe the you know Taj Mahal and then so on. The geological and geographical condition of the site again it has changed a lot like uh, from uh, the primitive age there was some age of dinosaurs and then there is a sudden change multiple uh, major earthquakes, tsunami 
then asteroid attack. So, the world has changed and then geographical condition and keep on changing the temperature of uh, the earth is changing day by day the global warming uh, has uh, you know started affecting. So, with that geological geographical condition of the site changes accordingly the selection of the building typology that also changed. Now, the climate this is another impact that already I have uh, talked about the climate has changed. So, for that accordingly how you make your building climate responsive, how you really tackle that issue the high tornado or maybe the high heat uh, in case of any summer situation in Dubai that we have discussed in some other lectures then where like the fascia should be designed in such a manner that which will protect from this. The material improvement is like each minute there is some improvement in that. With earlier there was no availability of concrete. So, uh, people they started uh, making it with the mud and then uh, gradually they started with the lime and then uh, the machinery work and then the concrete and then the steel and then the composite and then nano carbon. So, keep on uh, keep on in increasing uh, the number of options and then uh, there is a, a particular you know requirement to select the material. The machinery has changed uh, different crane, different robots now being used as already I have mentioned earlier in this uh, like the 3D painters and then automated uh, you know more automation to the construction. So, that the building can have the minimal error and then that will have also the quality control and also it can be a speedy construction. The manpower again uh, they are also the its automation like the portion that uh, people can uh, really you know that robot can help that. But at the same time the manpower also includes is not about the labor as I mentioned earlier that it also uh, includes the intellectuals who are making this innovation and all. So, this is very vital for like we are very much helpful to those scientists to those engineers who develop alternative materials and just improve that scenario which will actually tackle all these issues. Then the methods is the similar thing how you construct. Then the money is uh, again uh, a very much uh, critical issue where the affordability uh, can make wherever there is some you know uh, um, developed situation develop, develop economy. So, we can have that impact on the overall urban settlement and the building as well. The time and the technology um, they that also like this is basically the six aims that we talked about that also change that time like earlier a building requires a six month of time for one or two to rebuilding and now with the prefabrication with the modern techniques uh, within a week or within a month the multi story building is formed and is ready for the use. So, this is the improvement that uh, already we have made and we are in a process to even go beyond that. Uh, taking the application of IT different you know artificial intelligence minimizing the risk of any other uh, issue and then it can all come uh, through the innovation. So, uh, we need innovation we first uh, require a need. So, need is the seed and then that will actually instigate the innovation. So, I started the lecture with the need and then I am almost in a uh, you know in the end of this presentation where I said key innovation and this is basically uh, it is continuing. So, this is continuing still we get innovation we always make betterment in our uh, building structure and form the selection. So, this is very useful and then definitely uh, I just simply mentioned uh, this slide this is the sustainability where uh, like whatever we make whatever the technology we use whether the material we use we should think for uh, making the yield environment sustainable that is also referred to the green architecture or green development. So, it uh, has some component where the construction material should be eco friendly will have very uh, minimal effect or no effect to the environment the indoor quality where basically you can uh, make it with uh, the health and other thing with the daylighting and ventilation. Then the water is very much precious resource for us 
and um, for that the you know um, proper use the building uh, water independent building and uh, that can actually optimize the use of water is desired. Then the site uh, wherever you make your site then basically it should evolve with the site and then uh, the proper maintenance it should not disturb the ecology of this. And then the beauty and freshness that is again uh, another view that with all these you should not really make something very boring people will not adopt. So, there will be no compromise on the structural point of view even we can do excellence on uh, the aesthetic and then the renewable energy because not only the energy that we are talking about to like switching on the AC or all even during uh, the procurement of the building materials there is energy involved the transportation also energy involved then the during construction energy involved even there are some energy which also lead to the embedded energy of the material and the research is also going on to just minimize to have some materials will have this kind of minimization in the energy sector. So, with all these parameters if we can make something really uh, a green architecture or sustainable architecture that will be really helpful for the future. So, the practice is already been done there are different agencies like Griha even the leads in the international scale. So, who are making some rating and there are more even this subject is very interesting and yeah, definitely either you have gone through this subject or maybe in future in your curriculum you will get it. There are materials available on sustainability, but this is a full fledged subject. I cannot really cover all of them into this. I just highlighted this part where the importance of sustainable architecture for the future generation is very vital and we can contribute in many ways of taking the parameters as well where this particular roof gardening is being concerned where the ventilation, cooling, heating, uh, the passive solar application. So, this all can help to make a building sustainable. So, here you can see that uh, along with this greenery and all this is vertical, but again it is giving some good result. Now, this is basically the concluding slide for uh, this particular lecture as well as for the entire course. As I mentioned that this is uh, the last lecture of this particular course and this picture is self explanatory. So, where we started earlier with the stone hinge and then now the this is the Marina uh, Bay Sands hotel. So, it is almost look like maybe the structural system, structural arrangement material use the scale that differs, but basically again in this case we have discussed earlier that this is also constructing of the slab like structure where your building is having some incline. So, if you see from this section, so you have uh, this kind of two slab and then these three buildings is holding another uh, you know slab on top of it. So, this is the evolution and it is continuing. So, this is very important to understand for us whatever uh, we know, whatever the information we know today, uh, it will be obsolete or it will be backdated tomorrow. So, always our uh, target should know to get updated with the new technology, new materials, new examples which is being practiced, which has been researched and tested to adopt it. It will take time, but uh, definitely uh, it will be the future where we can talk about the materials, the prefabrication, whether we talk about the technology, energy optimization, application of IT uh, uh, to your building design, everything will play around and also like even um, going for the alternative materials, how to reuse or uh, minimize the waste, making material out of the waste material. So, there are plenty of area where we can contribute to make a better sustainable built environment and that actually uh, will be the true uh, you know follow up for, for you know the architecture and structure their relation uh, from the past, the present and the future. And if we can practice that, that will be uh, justice to uh, this particular you know learning. And then at the end uh, what I just want to give you a very 
huge thank for your patience to you know attend uh, this particular to join this particular course and to get uh, different uh, you know idea with the discussion and all and for that i give you a big uh, thank to all of you who have uh, you know gone through this who joined this and uh, here also the key point uh, that i just repeat that is your again the change is the only constant so this is the line that here like in other lectures i summarize something that what we have learned but here is the key point that we should take the change is the only con constant and that's the reason that from the cave architecture to now burj khalifa so this is the journey and how the multi dimensional improvement that happened over the period and it's continuing taking the concept of sustainability adopting new technologies materials and definitely uh, whatever is good for the society for the human being with that i uh, complete this uh, particular course these are very few uh, reading materials and then uh, already that is uh, being there in for the all the slide so thank you very much for uh, attending this course thank you Thank you.